In the early 1970s, whilst the United States and the Soviet Union were signing their nuclear treaties, the arms race was a completely different story. Everything was still in full throttle there. So I've reviewed many tanks over the last year, and I must be honest that I've only given positive feedback about most of them. Until now. Yes, I'm talking about the T-72 M1. But before I get into why I wouldn't add this into my lineup, let's have a look at its history first. The T-72 was developed under the Soviet Union, of course. They had a particular doctrine called the Warsaw Pact Doctrine. And that doctrine was simple. It was lots of manpower, lots of equipment, send it in waves and hope for the result meaning quantity over quality. Now, this is where the T-72 comes in. The T-72 is a Soviet-designed main battle tank that entered production in 1971. It replaced the T-54, T-55 series as the workhorse of the Soviet tank forces. Again, that gives you the context now. There were other higher technology tanks like the T-64 and the T-80 at the time. But we're focusing on the T-72 and in fact one variant, the M1. Now the M1 is a specific variant that was not actually made in Russia itself but actually part of a Soviet Union license. It was produced in Poland and Czechoslovakia and provided to East Germany during the 70s as a main battle tank option. That is why we have this variant in this tech tree. But before I carry on with the juicy war thunder bits, the last thing I wanted to mention is its current operators. Now, whilst this tank is very much quantity over quality, it is still being used all over the world today. It's being used in Africa, the Middle East, South America. Countries like Algeria, for example, or Angola actually have working T-72s in its arsenal. India actually has over 2,000 of them that is still operational. Alright, I have managed to switch the tank on for now, so that's a good start. Question is, can I get this thing to actually go forward? Can I move it around? I don't know any of the buttons inside here, none of the controls, it's all Russian. Okay, that is not going forward, that is not what that was supposed to do. Let's try it the other way. There we go, and we're underway in this interesting specimen of a Russian tank. Not for Germany, but uh, as all the Russian... What was the Czechoslovakian? I'm not sure. What does this button do? That was not supposed to happen. I didn't know this tank had a self-destruct button in it. So, we're back at War Thunder now, and let's look at some of the juicy details of the tank. Like I said, it comes in at a battle rating of 9.3. But is it really 9.3? I don't know. I mean, there's the M48 Super, there's the Leopard 1A5, there's even the Leopard A1A1 that is more superior to this tank. So why is this at 9.3? When APF SDS is considered in the battles, that doesn't really matter anymore. The research cost for this tank is 220,000 research points. Its purchasing cost comes in at 620,000 silver lions. So already it's quite a heavy tank to grind out. But why? Why do people want this tank? I just don't understand. The reason is because, yes, I get to drive a Soviet-era T-type tank in the German tech tree. Okay, it's hunting time. Let's see. Something's happened here. Ooh, hello. What's going on over there? Let's get some heat of this. Dropped its engine. So it's not going to be able to move. That's good. There we go. Pick off its crew. Easy peasy. See, heat of still works with the tank. But I do prefer to... I do prefer APFSDS though. No. 
at 9.3, you will have to be very quick and you probably want to be using APFSDS as your first option against any vehicle at this battle rating. Hold on a second, something's on the left there. Or not. Alright, hello. And goodbye. Straight through the ammo carriage. I love it when I nick those. Easy pickings. It's a light vehicle though. But still, the T72, pretty hardy in this sort of circumstances. Come on out. Wait for it. Good bye, sir. Right through. It's the beauty of APFSDS. Although, oh, well, definitely blew his ammo rack out. Ah, uh, something behind it. Come, just reverse for me, please. Oh, there we go. Bang! Strike through. Not a bad tank. But I have to be honest though, it's not a tank I necessarily will pick above the Leopards. It's got more armor, but that's why the M48 Super is there. And picking you off, that will make it six for me for the game. So one thing to mention again is that this is a workhorse tank, it's not a high tech tank, but we'll get to the consensus at the end of it. Even though it is a workhorse though, we have to put some sort of statistics into perspective here. The armor is composite armor nonetheless. It's got smoke grenades, it's got ESS, it's even got self entrenching equipment, which is very useful to trench yourself in. The armor has a front thickness of 110 millimeters. The turret actually even at 125. The best way to play the tank is obviously just looking straight forward because that's where the most armor sits. And of course, with APF SDS, it doesn't really matter too much. They will penetrate it. Looking at the gun, of course, it is a huge armament of 125 millimeters. The 2A46 cannon has got a two plane stabilizer and of course an autoloader. So there are some kind of benefits using this tank. Its reload speed is only 7.1 seconds. So that's pretty good to consider. And then looking at its depression itself, it's only sitting at minus six degrees, but we all know the Soviet tanks aren't really good with depression itself. The other armaments also to consider is the laser rangefinder, which is also very useful. And of course the night vision device. Now, all in all, the tank is pretty well-rounded for a workhorse tank. It's not got a lot of high-tech on it. If you're looking for high-tech, you need to go to the T80 variants. Those can actually give you all the extra niceties, if you so wish to look for it. So now that I've covered pretty much all the statistics about the tank, let me tell you as to why I will not add this into my lineup. Well, it's quite easy. There are many other tanks that are just better. They're higher technology. Why would I be driving this relic around at 9.3 when I've got a Leopard 1A5, an M48 Super, a KPZ-70, which is about touch and go, or even a Leopard A1A1. They all have thermal imaging to start with, which is a game changer at this battle rating, which you need actually at this battle rating. All of them have APFSDS. All of them have laser range finders. The only thing that this T-72 has above all these tanks is armor. It can maybe withstand a couple of more HE shells. But let's be honest, who's using HE? No one. Everyone is dropping APFSDS at 9.3. That's why I would go back to Gaijin and say, maybe just relook this one a little bit and drop it down maybe by a point in terms of battle rating. But that's my opinion. And on that bombshell, here is an actual tank that I feel that will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the T-72. 